Our first presentation focuses on water data and some of the important advances that we've seen in water data in Texas in recent years. And on that topic, I'm excited to introduce Richard Wade, the Deputy Executive Administrator of TINRIS, the Texas Natural Resource Information System, which is part of the Texas Water Development Board. Richard's been with that agency for 16 years. You can read his full bio on the app or in the conference program. Welcome, Richard. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Can I'm assuming everybody can hear me. Is this okay? Okay. Um, first of all, thank you so much for uh, inviting me here today. This is a, a special treat, and I'm actually surprised of how many people are actually here. Um, and of course, now there's the added uh, stress of knowing that I'm actually being live streamed. So I'm going to try to do the best I can. My name is Richard Wade. Um, Deputy Executive Administrator of Tenris. If, uh, has anybody here ever used Tenris data or know who we are? Okay, good. Um, so I've been doing basically uh, GIS and, and data, developing data for pretty much my entire career. Um, I started off basically as a computer scientist and got my degree in computer science and just fell in love with computer mapping and, and, uh, and data. And so 22 years at the water board and about 12 years in the private sector. So I've done both. I've been on the other side of it where I've needed the information so I understand what some, some of the issues really are. Um, I, I can't say that I'm actually a water data person. There's a lot of uh, you know, data and nuances as it relates to water data. Um, but to me, data is information as with any other information and it needs to be handled in a particular way. So I'm not gonna claim that I know all the details of water data. Um, but I do want to, you know, basically talk about, we know we've, we've, seen, we've seen James Michener's quote about water uh, rather than oil is the lifeblood of Texas. And I believe that's absolutely true. I mean, we've, we've lived through it over the last 12 years with the incredible droughts that we had and now with the floods. And something tells me we're probably gonna cycle right back into that here in the very, very near future. Um, so it, it is, it's extremely important, and we need to be aware of what data exists and how we can get to it. Basically, our challenge is to ensure that we have dependable and safe water supplies. What does it take to get there? In my opinion, you need the information, you need the data. So pretty much like everyone else, it's about finding the information. How do you find it? Um, some of you guys who have been around a while have your resources that you go to, but Data is not getting any, you're not getting less data anymore. Things are really, really starting to stack up. And you need to be aware of where that information exists and you need to be comfortable with what you're getting. So where do you start? Basically where you start is that you probably use your computer and you do a search or you go onto the site that you're familiar with and you do a search and you're happily typing away and you're doing whatever you need to do. But then you get the results back and you're immediately going, well, what is this? Is this data valid? Is it good? Can I trust it? Is it, is it updated? Um, or you might have multiple versions of the same file, which we get a lot on a lot of data hubs. And you have to really know what you're doing because you could basically plan or do something with that data and found out it's, it's invalid. And we've done that. We've, we've had episodes where people have used wrong data and have completed, done an, some sort of analytics to it and re realized they had to change the data out and start over. So it basically leaves you frustrated. You don't quite really know where to turn and, and how to move forward. So the issue I think we have at this point is that data information is needed to, to, to make these decisions is really hard to find. It, it can be very, very hard to find. And it's very sometimes hard to access. It's not in the format that you need and you have to go through a process to get to it. And then using it's a whole other story. So the result is you're not as efficient at doing what you need to do. We recognize that, we understand that. So I always had this kind of thought in my mind about what data, what finding data and what a data hub really is. And I've always equated it to data are like public bathrooms. Everybody needs it. And everybody uses it, but they're not responsible for it. I don't want to be responsible for this data. I can put it up there, maybe other people can use it, I'll grab data and hopefully what I'm getting is the right thing. Um, and what you end up getting is 
a public bathroom. You get a mess. You get somebody supposed to take care of this, but it isn't going to be me. It's going to be somebody else. I'm just using the information or whatever. So why is it that some bathrooms look like this? Okay, we probably all recognize where, where, where this is. But the, but, the, but the thought here is the following. Which would you rather use? The left one or the right one? You would obviously want to use the right one, but why is it clean and the other one is not clean? Um, I think that's really the important one. Why is the one clean? The people who use it are the same. They do this, they, you know, they, they use it the same way. So why is one different? And it's because you have somebody whose job it is to keep it that way. And I think that's really where we, where we fail on a lot of our data hubs, is you need somebody who's not waiting till the end of the day to sweep up or do whatever they're gonna do. You need somebody that's going to, to be responsible to make sure the information is where it needs to be. And it's really all about that. I think that's one thing we, that we're gonna really be focusing on. And so what happens? You go in, you're probably traveling from here to there, and the first thing you do is, well, I'm, gonna, I'm going to, you know, I, I need to stop and, and, and take a pit stop. I go somewhere, you hope the bathrooms are clean, and maybe you'll pick up a soda or some snacks. But if you go into that clean bathroom, you walk out, you see this great selection of beaver nuggets and cherry balls and whatever else they have, and you walk past it, and you go, well, I'm gonna grab some of that. I, that looks pretty good. Oh, hey, look, there's fishing poles. I didn't even know they had fishing poles here. I'm gonna go fishing next week. I'll grab me a fishing pole, and then grab me a brisket sandwich on the way out, prepared by people who know what they're doing to create these brisket sandwiches, and, 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 and give you your data. And so you walk out of there, you, walk, you went in there to use the restroom, you came out with a bag of stuff, okay? So why am I, you know, what does that translate to? That actually translates to customers, people, people wanting to go there. I would basically bet that on the way here, somebody stopped at Bucky's on the way here for that exact reason. Um, but, from my standpoint, even though it's crowded and you go in, it's still a positive experience for the most part. It's, it's usually a positive experience. So you're asking me, why am I telling you, talking about bathrooms? Well, it's because the customer experience matters. And I think that's really something we can't lose sight of. That when we create a water data hub, we have to have it so that it meets the needs of customers like yourself but not only just meets the needs, but also is a, uh, uh, something that we, we consult with you guys on, which we have done. So as it relates to the Water Data Hub, I just wanna give you a couple of, a quick, couple of quick background slides here. Um, back in April of 2018, some of you guys were probably involved in this. We had a connecting, we have a kind of little get together in Austin, um, connecting Texas Water Data Workshop. Um, Again, many of you, I think, might have been there. And what we learned from that is that we wanted to identify what critical water data needs are. What are they? And what would a statewide system look like? And so that's what kind of really started this process up. And in that, one of the things that you told us was that we are interested in making water data more fair. And fair is an acronym for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Of course, findable, we know that. We know what it is. It's searching it and finding it and getting exactly what you're looking for. Accessible, the ability to get to it and use it and put your hands on it. Interoperable is the fact that you need to make sure, or we need to make sure, that it doesn't matter what system you're using, this data will work within that. So there's standards that are built into this. And reusable, right? If it's a service of some sort, you're using that data over and over again, you are depending on that, that data is gonna be updated and it's gonna be the right stuff. It's not going to be old. You don't know what you have. You need to be, have that assurance that that's what's happening. Also too, um, after that meeting uh, convened, there was a little subset of that meeting that were, where they all got together. And basically, uh, under the Texas Water Data Initiative, they started talking a little bit more about, let's get this thing moving forward, right? And so it, it started coming up about, well, why don't we go to the legislature and ask for funding and try to see if we can get this to, to go somewhere? 
um, funding for these critical water data needs that we're all talking about because it doesn't just happen on its own. You need support, you need momentum behind it. And so that's what we did. You know, the T Water Development Board actually went to the legislature asking for funding to help with uh, additional resources when it comes to water data and flood and all those things that are all related. And we did receive those resources. So that puts us in an amazing situation, right? Texas now has a unique opportunity to contribute and shape the water landscape. And this is something we really need to take seriously now because it's up to us to do something with that. So our mission, the mission is basically to create an intuitive system that indexes documents search and has access to Texas water data and, will, and, and improve the data-driven decision-making process in Texas. That's what we're looking to do. It's really easy to say it. It's very difficult to do it. Um, but as we do this, we need to understand how people work, how people use information, how they move this forward. So we are seeking to understand how people search for data. That's pretty obvious, but I, you know, it's, it's important to know that. And how they use water data. Why is it important for people to, to evaluate the data source? And do they evaluate the data source? And, and, how they, and how the producers of information actually update their information and share the data. Are there any limitations to that? We need to understand those kinds of things. So we did something interesting. We actually had, uh, over the last couple of years, we've really been trying to get to the psyche of how people work and start to understand. We didn't want to just start building stuff and just say, hey, it's right here and nobody knows how to use it and, and that kind of thing. So we started to have these really, really creative ways to pull information out of people. And this is an example of that. So some of our research, and some of y'all, again, might have been part of this research and, and recognize this, but what this is is everything in those white cards there is a graphic that shows you what primarily is in a data hub of some sort, you know? We just kind of took things and threw it out there and say, and we put these emojis on there, and we told people, how do these things make you feel? drag the emoji over to it and tell us what you love, what you are frustrated with, what you can't stand, what you like, you know, all those kinds of things. And so people did that. So they drag it all over. And you can use the icons more than once. You could love everything if you wish. But, you know, like we told them, be honest, what, what frustrates you and so forth. So they would do that. And then what we would end up doing is telling them to rank them from the most important to the least important. And they did that. Without saying any other thing to them, we basically said, why did you choose that order? Explain it. And as they would explain it, they would reorder it, and they would reorder it, and they would reorder it to a point where it didn't look anything like the original. And, you know, it was really fascinating to watch because what you didn't, what you didn't actually understand was they didn't really know either. They weren't quite sure exactly what was important to them, but they had experiences that they drew from. So search always got low on the list. It got the little frowny face or the, you know, whatever. And I'd go, why? Search is so important. Why do you put search on the low side? And they said, because search never works. So, but if search worked, would you put it high? Oh yeah, of course. Well, okay. So search is important when it works. It's not important when it doesn't work. So implementation is huge. And we learned about that. We learned how people work. And we also learned that when they think about it over and over again, they change their mind. Um, so it, it's, it's an interesting philosophy as we went through this. So what we would do is we would collect all this information, we would just stick it up on these boards, and we would try to assess what it meant. We'd try to find what everybody created and find that fine line that went through all of them and try to group them. And so we had a board that looked similar to this. And what I'm about to show you are some slides not relating to the data hub, but to the flood information we did because the data hub was done under the pandemic and we did everything video, so I didn't take any pictures, but this was a very similar process. So I just want to kind of show this to you. Um, so we get the people in the room and they would look at this and they would assess that information. They would try to understand it. And, uh, and then from that, we would debate it over and over again. And then we would put it back up on the board as you see what's happening here. And, uh, and go through this. And this is one of my favorite slides because if anybody knows Mike Wilmet over at TDEM, he's the gentleman in the chair with his hands on his head that looks really, really um, upset about something. Um, 
and if Mike, if you're watching, I apologize for using your slide that you tell me not to use, but I forgot we were live streaming. Anyway, bottom line is, but, but this, this shows some of the frustrations. What's important to some people are not important to other people. And you know, Mike's reaction to what we're doing is like, oh, I think you're missing the point. But it's important that he, that he stresses that so we can understand what that is. Then we would start to organize these things a little bit better and put them in some sort of a structure. And it started to make some sense. All of this stuff had a little fine line that ran through it all. So then we would build a, kind of more of a flow of what people would expect. If I click here, where does this go? I need to know if I do this, what's the result? And then from that, what's the result? And so we tried to, to build these little hooks. Now this is real early in some you know, real basic pages, but this is what we were up to. By the time we were done, I don't expect anybody to see, know what this is, but this is actually a set of all the pages laid out with every iteration of what could possibly happen on that page and where it goes from there. And, how the, and, and so from that, we understand how this is going to be developed and built. And then we go back and we build it. We build a prototype, a very, very basic prototype, and we would we put a person in another room with that prototype, person who was helping us develop this, who said, these are the things I need. And we were watching the screen that they were using. That screen is actually a mirror of the screen they're on. And if you look real closely, you'll see a little video image at the top. So we wanted to catch their expressions, too. Um, and that told us a lot. You know, their expressions, and when they were frustrated with something, we really understood it. But I think this is what it's going to take for us to do what, you know, do what we're going to do. And by the end of it, we go through iterations to the point that finally, I think we're, we, we, we get it and people are comfortable and we can start to move forward a little bit. So that's the process that we're going through on, on Water Data Hub currently. So I want to talk a little bit about this pilot data that, we are, that we're working on. Um, so as we built the structure and we kind of understand what's going to go based on the input that we received from you guys, um, we asked, what, let's, get it, let's get data in there and let's start using it. What data products do we need to put in? And so what we, what we did was is we, we queried everybody and everybody told us what, they're, what they wanted. And so these are the ones we chose. So the USGS water rights data was one of the high ones on the, on the list. Let's get, that, let's get that into the prototype. And so what you see is the actual screen where that, that actually has been done. So we have water rights in there now. Um, we're looking at now putting in the USGS uh, spring water levels and conditions, so that's going in there. Um, Y'all told us that's a really important data set, and I, think, and I think for sure that would definitely be. And then the board has a spring monitoring program as well. There's only about 20 or so sites in that, but that's going to be added into there because we can do that, and it would make sense to how do we handle different sources of similar data. Um, and then the last thing is our Texas Mesonet um, information is going to go into the system as well. So we're currently working on that. So we've established a series of goals afterwards that, that uh, we think makes some sense, but I think this is where it's going to separate us from a normal data hub that you're used to going to. And these, what, these are what we came up with. So it's a data-driven approach, um, data services approach, I should say. We're not interested in taking your data and, and ingesting it ourselves. What we're really interested in is creating data services, having you create data services when you can. If you can't create data services, maybe we can help. Um, you know, t take important information, let's get that in there, but we don't want to be responsible for the data. We want to link to your data and have you be responsible for your data. Metadata driven. Everybody knows about metadata, but basically what I'm referring to here is metadata is also used as the search, some of the search criteria too. Um, so not only are you searching on the name and some of the tags that go along with it can actually search off into the metadata and get you better, better results as you move forward. Authoritative data is the big one. This is where we need to find the responsible entities and put those out there. Um, and we would know who is responsible for that data. So if it goes down or we get questions about it, we can talk to you. Um, this is that part where I said in the bathroom that nobody takes responsibility. Well, I think it's time we take some responsibility for our information. Um, so we're going to gear toward a lot of authoritative data. It means we can't use other information, but I think it's going to be real important that authoritative data is in there, the responsible entity is in there. 
And then the customer service part, which is this feedback channel and user support, where we are manning that at all, at all times. Um, so that feedback is something that if you're having an issue or you're getting frustrated, you can send us a message and we will respond to that. Um, so this is plan we're planning to have this to be a supported system. Um, and you will, can talk to somebody if you're having issues, especially on the feedback as it relates to the goals um, and what you want to see added or changed uh, over time, and we'll collect those. And then it's going to be a self-checking system that auto-reports data errors to staff. So we have a, the system is going to be smart enough to go in at midnight every night and look at every link it has and see is it responding back appropriately. If it's, if it's giving a, a, a site not found error, it's going to report that so when staff comes in in the morning, they'll get the error logs and they'll start to go through and figure out what data are not working and we catch it before you catch it. And I think that's really kind of, kind of our deal. So I think I'm running short on time, but I, in closing, I did want to say that this is part of a bigger picture. This isn't necessarily a, uh, you know, we're going to build this data hub and it's going to be standalone and it's going to do this thing. Data hub is part of a bigger idea in Texas for all data. And so, you know, we're working with USGS with their Inform um, product and their flood decision support toolbox. Water data is important for that too. It's going to be ingesting, it's going to be populating information from the, from the water data hub into that. Um, we're going to work closely with Texas A&M and the uh, Institute for Disaster Resilient Texas. Um, they have something called the, the Texas Disaster Information System that is huge when it comes to trying to find information, trying to find data. And it's going to need water data as well. So all these separate hubs will one day talk to each other that when you do a search in one hub, it's going to go to another hub and find its information if it's not in the hub you went to. And so the goal is to just un unify all of this in more of a standardized format. That's a lofty goal. That's not happening tomorrow. But we're, the great news is the motivation is finally there with everybody involved. Everybody wants this to happen. And this is where we're going to rely on you for for that support and for that assurance that you will help us get it where it is because we're not designing this system because the water board is designing it. We're designing it because you helped us get it to this point. And so you are the customers. And like I had mentioned, the customer experience is what's, is, is what's important. Our, our, one of our board members loves this saying, and, we, and, and, it, and it really hits home every time we talk about data, but she, she always talks about uh, our, uh, Kathleen Jackson, who is our, one of our board members, the director, always says, the better the data, the better the science, the better the science, the better the policy. And she truly believes that. And I believe that's why we have that sort of, of, uh, of momentum behind us, because our executive staff our board members, everybody else truly believes we have to do this. Um, and then lastly, I just want to bring up who we're working with on this. Um, so we are working with Internet of Water. Duke University has been a group that we've been talking to exclusively on this. And they've been helping us understand the technology, move that forward. And so they're in our meetings pretty much every week. Uh, they've worked with California, New Mexico, and set up data hubs for them. We want to be interoperable with the other states as well that are in part of this process, Western States uh, Water Council. But a big shout out needs to go to the Cynthia and George Mitchell Foundation um, for all their support and help along this way, specifically uh, Dr. Robert Mace, if he's in here, um, has been instrumental for making this happen when he was at the board and again, over at the Mitchell Foundation for all his support that he gave us, because I don't think if we had that, I don't think we would be doing this this way. I probably wouldn't be talking about it right now, and it would be so much delayed. So, um, And then our staff, Sam Hermit, uh, Taylor Christian, Chris Repka, and the development team, and our designer, Laura Sepulveda, are the ones doing all the really, really hard work on this. So thanks to, and then thanks to all of you who have helped support this and will hopefully continue to keep us going and keep the momentum going. I believe that's my time, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Do I have time for questions? Okay. Oh, okay. I can take any questions if anybody has any.
Oh. Yeah. Didn't think of that one. I'm not mic'd up, so you can't hear me. Someone had uh, texted a question asking about where the greatest data needs, the specific kinds of data that GCDs in particular could help with. So I think that, so that's a great question. I, as I mentioned, I'm not necessarily a data guy, but what I would anticipate or what are people asking you for? What are the data sets that people want from you all the time or are asking you for? And where do you have them and how are they located uh, in your site? And that would be something if you say, all those people in these, in these groundwater districts, if you constantly are hammered with requests that everybody's asking for this data, let's talk. We could put it in here and make it automated and, and have some way to join up with y'all and, and make that work. So. Um, a, a great question, but I would just say whatever people are asking for is really critical that we put into a system like this, if you can do it. And we also want to know what data is important, but maybe you're having trouble putting it into a system, maybe making a service out of it. Those things are important to us, too. So I hope that answers that question. Yes. Who brought the process to us, like the actual development side? We, we did something different that we've never done before, is we actually hired designers that actually understood what makes a good site. You know, a lot of times sites are built by the engineers or the people who use it and say, hey, it works great for me. Why don't, I don't know why nobody likes it. You know, it's one of those things. What we did is we brought in full web application designers that listen to people and say, this is how it needs to go. This is what, these are the best practices for making a good data hub website. You know, we want the Bucky's bathroom. We don't want the other one. You know, well, that's what we're, we're really trying to do. And it shows when you have a really good site, people hit it, people come and you'll see, you know you're doing well when you start to see your people coming on in, in, more, in more numbers. So. That's how, that's how we did it. We decided to go a little outside the box on that. I hope that answered your question. Okay, oh yeah, okay. She's actually on this slide, right? Laura Sepulveda is her name. She is our lead designer. And she came up with all the ideas on how to pull that information out of people, and it's been fascinating to watch her. Any other? Another one in over the, yep, I got another question in over the app asking, will the development board's generated data, such as groundwater storage volumes, be hosted by the Water Data Hub? Uh, so the answer to that is, that is our plan, yes. Our plan is to get everything into the Water Data Hub uh, best we can uh, and, and create services out of it. So we're gonna have to kind of follow our own direction a little bit um, and really focus on service-related stuff out of the Water Development Board, so yes. And I had one other question come in and it kind of goes to that GCD data, um, are you guys going to put together some sort of like standardized methodology for monitoring and data collection that people should be following if they want their data incorporated? That's exactly right. Um, so we are going to be doing that. We are going to be working on certain sets of standards, white papers that we can send out to people. I think we're even gonna go into to possibly holding workshops with you guys to say, this is how the best way to get your data where it needs to be. And we'll be following, we'll be following other standards as well. We're not gonna ask you to do anything that, that's really crazy or out there. Um, it's basically, there's some simple ways to do that. We wanna share those with you and get you involved in that and help you along the process. So I can see where we would be setting up specific workshops to have more of those conversations. Any more audience questions? I don't see any hands, but there are some really bright lights back there, so I don't want to miss anybody. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Richard. Everybody, let's give him a round of applause. Appreciate that today.